Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. All right, we're back at the Georgia Gun Club. It's a busy day today, so you'll probably hear a lot of gunshots going off around me. I'm shooting my Tika T3X chambered in 223 mounted in an Oryx chassis by MDT. I have a Vortex Diamondback Tactical 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane rifle scope. And today I am shooting hand loads. One of my viewers mentioned in a comment recently about the H335 powder and I was looking over my powders the other day and I picked up a can. I thought it was empty, but it was a full pound. So I thought, okay, well, let's give this a shot. So I got 60 VMAX Hornady bullets and I'm using uh, mixed cases, five times fired black with Federal 205 primers loaded at two and a quarter inch overall length. This is the rifle. We'll be shooting 10 shot groups at 100 yards and I will have powder charges ranging from 20.8 and that will be a fouling shot. And I'm shooting this, the fouling shot with a 55 grain full metal jacket. It's close to the same charge weight. So I think in terms of elevation difference, this might shoot a high, a tad higher, if anything. But uh, the ballistic tip on the VMAX is definitely going to shoot differently. But we'll be shooting charge weights from 20.8 to 22.7 grains. This is according to the velocities derived from their website. We'll be shooting from just under 2,800 feet per second at 2,794 to just under 3,000 at 2,973. So say 2,800 to 3,000 feet per second and in between. All right, so let's get going. As always, you're welcome to enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting, or you can skip forward to the results that follow. Shooting at 100 yards. Right, it looked like three and four grouped the best. Five was a little scattered. I had an event early on where I adjusted the sight after the first target because it was shooting far to the left and it was encroaching on the other target space. So when I adjusted that, before I started shooting, I had actually overcorrected that. I had turned the um, turret the wrong way. Stupid me, dumb mistake. I should have looked at it. Um, 
So the next one was shooting way far to the left, so I ended up using the first four shots to get it sighted in. So as far as the grouping goes, I'm going to look at those six shots that I shot without any adjustment. I'm going to look at those more closely because they were pretty much near the bullseye. Here we go. Okay, and one thing I found out is that a 55 full metal jacket is not going to shoot like a 60 V Max at the same load. This was shooting a little bit to the left. This was shooting really hard to the left. And so I adjusted the scope. I thought to pull it back this way, but I actually adjusted it incorrectly. So when I got to 21.3, this was my first shot. And I thought, oh crap, I adjusted it back to then three and then four. And after four, I hit it three more clicks and let it go. So these six shots right here were shot with the same sight adjustment. So this was basically just getting the group back on target. So I didn't just keep shooting off off the paper almost. Uh, let's see. Group number three shot okay. We've got two flyers out here, but we've got a pretty tight group here. But still, that's probably going to be an inch and a half there. Uh, let's see. This is probably less than an inch and a half, but we've got a really tight cluster here and two that are pretty close here, so that's probably going to be my highest mean radius at 22.2 grains. And then at 22.7, it really started pulling towards the right. So don't know how much of that was me, how much of that was the ammo. Uh, the shooter is always the variable in that, so you just don't know sometimes. So anyway, we'll take these home, measure them, and see how they look. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. I'm back from the range. These are my results with the 60 grain VMAX bullet and the Hodgson's H335 powder. One of my viewers had suggested that I try that, so here we go, I am. And there might be some areas where we need to zero in a little bit because I found a pretty good load here, I think, but we probably need to develop on either side of that just below and just above that group to see if maybe we can find a better performing load. All right, so on our fouling shot, um, getting the rifle sighted in, we're shooting a little bit low into the left. I adjust it. My final shot is right here, just next to the bullseye. So I begin shooting at that setting. Now, I was using on that fouling group a 55 grain full metal jacket bullet. And I found out really quick that a 55 full metal jacket bullet, though it's only five grains lighter than the 60 VMAX, those bullets performed very differently because when I started shooting that first group at 20.8 grains of powder, it was shooting way over here to the left. So we're shooting 1.22 inches to the left and a half an inch high just above that bullseye. We've got uh, an extreme spread of 1.42 inches and uh, we have a mean radius of 0.42 inches, which your radius is half of a circle. So if you double that, that gives you an average group size of 0.84. But because it's a fairly tight group, it's 1.39 inches wide, but it's only 0.77 inches high. So we've got an area of 1.07 inches. Now, since that was shooting to the left, I decided to make an adjustment to the scope. We're not changing how the rifle shoots. We're only changing the point of impact. And I should have been looking at the turret when I turned it because instead of adjusting it the right way, I adjusted it the wrong way. So when we come to the second target at 21.3 grains, traveling at 2,839 feet per second, we're shooting way over here to the left, and I've numbered these. You can see the point of impacts were one, two, three, and four. And I was adjusting the scope to try to get it back over centered onto the target. So I shot four shots. I made another adjustment. So there were eight clicks between here and here. There were eight clicks. And then after shooting that fourth round, I adjusted it three more clicks, and then I resumed. So this is what I'm measuring here as a six shot group rather than a 10 shot group for those because those first four shots were used to get the scope aligned with the target.
they're shooting now a little bit high and a little bit to the right. So we're at 0.43 high and 0.39 to the right. In just six shots, we've got an extreme spread of 1.54 and a mean radius of 0.46, which gives you an average group size of 0.92. And we have an area of 1.4 inches. And we have a flyer out here that made it 1.54 and if you take that flyer out of the equation then you've got an average group size of five shots at 0 0.70 inches so i would consider that shooter error all right with no changes to the scope going forward we move to 21.8 grains at 2833 feet per second now we've got an extreme spread of 1.67 and a mean radius of 0.48, which gives you an average group size of 196. So we're spreading out somewhat, and we have an area of 1.31 inches. I think at 22.2 grains, I think that was my best group of the day, uh, and we're traveling at 2,928 feet per second. And so the extreme spread here was 1.25 inches from top to bottom, and we had a mean radius of 0.36, which gives you an average group size of 0.72. The area was only 0.92 inches, though. And we have a flyer down here. And if you take this flyer out of the equation, then you've got an extreme spread of 0.90 inches. So I do believe this was probably my best group of the day. It was definitely my best group as far as the extreme spread and the mean radius and the area. And if you take that flyer out, it's even tighter with nine out of 10. All right, at 22.7 grains, we're shooting the extreme spread of 1.77 inches. We're shooting just under an inch to the right and high at 0.93 to the right and 0.89 high. We have a mean radius of 0.56, which gives you an average group size of 1.12 but you see the shots are fairly well spread out here and we've got an area of 1.55 inches so here's a picture of the target as a whole with the statistics for each group itemized for each target all right so at 22.2 grains that's four tenths higher than our last group, and it's five tenths lower than our next group. So we're probably going to come back here and develop on either side of that, maybe loading just below and just above to see if we can get that particular group tightened up at all. All right, so these are my results. I hope you find this information helpful. So if you have any thoughts, ideas, suggestions, please leave those in the comments below. I hope you will like, share, and subscribe. And as always, Thanks for watching.